guys welcome back to another video so thank you guys for all the love on my last video and hello to all my new subscribers so for this week's video I will be doing my glucose test and I'll be taking you guys along with me with my first pregnancy I actually did have gestational diabetes which was surprising because even my OB said I did not match the description of somebody who would have gestational diabetes. It could be something that is just like hereditary and I do know a few people who've had it during their pregnancies in my family. But then again, everybody and every pregnancy is different. So when I found out I did have gestational diabetes, it was challenging the remaining of my pregnancy. But luckily, I did give birth to a healthy, beautiful baby girl. And after the pregnancy, I had to go back to retest just to be sure everything went back to normal, which it did. So I do know a few people who had no idea you have to do a glucose test during pregnancy. That's why I feel this might be helpful for some of you. So basically, gestational diabetes is the way your hormones break down the sugars in your body while you're pregnant and those get pushed down to your baby. So clearly, if you're having high blood pressure or high blood sugars, you're gonna have to manage that. That way you don't have a big baby during birth. But if that were the case, if you have a big baby, it will result in a C-section. So although it does sound extremely scary, I'm not here to scare you or anything like that. I'm just here saying what I learned from the classes I was provided and the lifestyle diet change that I did during pregnancy. So I'm so thankful I was provided with great help through my OB. He actually had me go to a class with a nutriologist and in the class it was just a one day, maybe like a few hours. We went through different ideas of what we can eat, what we can snack on, what we can drink and let me tell you it is not as scary or as bad as it seems. The main thing I learned from this class was basically how to create a eating schedule every single day, keeping track of your schedule and checking your blood sugars three times a day. So luckily when I'm pregnant, I don't get all those crazy cravings and stuff like that, but it does suck having to follow like a list of foods you can and can't eat. So I do feel like this diet was very helpful. My daughter was only five pounds at birth, five pounds, 11 ounces. <laughs> So she was very, very tiny and I feel like my diet had a lot to do with that. I do also believe that this diet change also helped my labor and my delivery go extremely smooth. So I feel like following a specific meal plan is very important for how your labor is gonna go. That's just something I believe in my opinion, of course, with being active and all that as well. So with all that being said, I do wanna try and just prep my body and try to eat the same ways that I would just to see if it has a different effect on my test. I did Google it and I did see some people said it doesn't matter what you eat. Your body is your body, it's gonna react the way it does. But I did see other people say to try to eat cleaner three days in advance, it might affect your results. So that's what we're gonna try this time. Luckily, whatever happens is meant to happen and I know how to take care of myself this second time around. I do remember the night before my glucose test with my first, I did have cereal late at night. I don't know if that might have spiked the results at the time of the blood test. This time around, I know not to do that and I know try to eat cleaner a little bit and we're gonna see if my body gets a different effect this time around or not. I did forget to mention I had to do weekly check-ins with a dietitian every single week <laughs> and they would check my numbers and make sure everything was up to date. If they saw something was spiked up, they would ask me what did I eat and give me a different idea of what I could eat next time just to balance out my numbers. For the most part, I was really good at it. It kind of became like almost a game where I would figure out when I could sneak in something sugary or have this certain drink, go get my coffee with extra caramel, and it wasn't too bad. Obviously, for the most part, I would eat cleaner 
keeping track of my numbers because at the end of the week I would have to show them to my dietitian. And obviously the main thing of all this is just to have a healthy, healthy baby. So always keep that in mind. So I thought I'd share with you guys how I'm gonna prep these three days, a few different snacks and meal ideas I'm gonna eat before my glucose test and hopefully you guys find it helpful. If you guys do have gestational diabetes or are looking for meal plans during pregnancy, I can definitely look back at my book and see different meal ideas I would eat and share them with you guys. But for right now, before my test on Thursday, I'm gonna go over a few different of the meals I'm gonna be eating this week to kind of prep myself and prep my body. So obviously for the main part, water is your best friend. So water is very important during pregnancy. Ice water tastes so good while you're pregnant. I don't know what it is. I fill it up a lot throughout the day, so I'm constantly trying to stay hydrated. Honestly, ice water right now is the only thing that sounds good to me compared to like a juice or soda or anything like that. You have to stay hydrated and honestly that helps wash down any sugars and everything you're eating and it just helps with your numbers coming out accurate. I'm gonna go over this briefly, but if you want a more in-depth video, let me know. I remember starting off my morning by checking my sugar. I would poke myself and then use the little detector that would check my blood and give me the number of what my sugars are looking like that morning. Sometimes they would be normal, sometimes they'd be low. And when they're low, it's kind of when you're starting to feel like dizzy, like you need to eat something now. That's kind of based off what you had the night before and the fasting period during your sleep. So I would wake up, check my blood, write down my number, and then start making my breakfast. So I can eat the same thing for a good amount of days without getting tired of it. I would make myself ham and egg burritos constantly, every morning. I would eat that with some hot sauce. That's kind of my breakfast for the day, that and some coffee. I'm gonna talk about this next, but basically, you want to look at the total carbohydrates and make sure that they are 15 grams and lower. So for example, for your breakfast, since it is a larger meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, your total carbs, you can have two 15 gram carbs. Does that make sense? So like you can have 30 grams of carbs for your breakfast, lunch, and your dinner. You want to try to stick with breads, tortillas, anything like that being 15 grams or less per slice. So basically, the main thing here to look out for is the carbs. Um, you can have as much amount of protein, eggs, ham as you want. You can add cheese, you can add avocado. That was my breakfast with some coffee. Now the coffee was something I would play with because if I had powdered creamer and regular sugar, my blood sugar would spike no matter what I would eat to kind of balance it out. And no matter how much water I would drink after the fact, something about powdered cream and the sugar scoops that would spike up drastically. I would kind of play around with the coffee, <laughs> the belly. So as weird as it sounds, I could go to McDonald's, order a regular iced coffee, and my sugars would be completely normal. But if I had like two scoops or one scoop of regular sugar here at home, my blood sugar would spike. So that is something that I would have for breakfast. For my snack, you would have to eat every two hours. So after my breakfast, I would put a timer and then within the two hours, I would have my snack, an apple and rice cakes. These are 11 grams of carbs and then some type of protein. So for the protein, trail mix. I got this from Walmart. These are actually 15 grams of carbs per one fourth cup of yumminess. I like these because they have a bit of chocolate and I love chocolate right now. That is my thing. This makes it feel like I'm having some type of candy. But basically, that would be my snack. The word diet is kind of scary, but seeing different options and different things you can eat really make you feel like it's not too bad and not too hard. Like you can still have caramel, you can still have M&Ms, you can still have your flavored items without it being original, plain, bland, you know? For my lunch, you can even go to In-N-Out, you can have like a protein cheeseburger or double double like i said the protein doesn't matter it's just the carbs so since you're gonna have 
a protein burger, you can have your fries, but of course, no ketchup and no spread. Definitely no spread. And then for the drink, you don't have to have water all the time. You can have unsweetened iced tea. You can have like coconut water and you can have like sparkling sodas, any flavors, fine. And then another snack idea I really, really like are Ritz. I would do Ritz with cheese and I get this one. Swiss cheese. These are really good because they're 10 grams per serving for five crackers. You could do your five crackers with your cheese on top and then some fruit, whatever kind. Keep it kind of like portion size. And then another idea is these yogurts. These were also very good. These are called Too Good and I get the vanilla and these were recommended by the dietitian. So you can get these. You can put some fruit in them, some berries, or some granola. Of course, stick to the portion size. Don't overdo it. So since you didn't have bread for lunch and you want bread for dinner, you can do like bacon wrapped hot dogs with all the toppings on top, grilled onion, jalapeno, whatever. All those are veggies and all those are not gonna spike up your sugar. <laughs> um, yeah, just make sure you stick to your portion. So like two buns, and everything else is protein and veggies, so all that won't really affect your sugar. Just make sure your drink is something like what I mentioned and you should be good. Those are kind of some ideas I'm gonna be sticking to throughout this week. Being pregnant or not, I kind of stick to these meals kind of frequently anyway. I don't really eat sweets, chips, candy, stuff like that regularly. I don't really crave it. I think the thing with my body is not eating on a certain schedule and that's where my sugars kind of go off balance. But anyway, I hope these little ideas help you guys out. I'll see you guys in a little bit or on Thursday for me for the glucose test. Good morning guys. It is glucose testing day. I'm gonna try to record as much as I can for you guys and I actually have to go already because it says arrive 15 minutes early and we are on time. So I'm gonna go in and see how long this takes. I'm already getting hungry. So wish me luck. Alright guys, so I am back in the car. I took the drink exactly at 7. I have to be back in one hour. So they took out blood. Um, they do that before giving you the drink. It wasn't too bad. There was a lot of people and there was no chairs. So I was just standing. But luckily, because we are pregnant and fasting, they let us go in a little before everyone else. They take out blood and then they give you the drink. So the lady that did my blood and gave me the drink, she was so funny. I asked her if I could record and she said um, that they don't allow it anymore. But then when I took the drink, I asked her if I could record my and she said I see nothing I'm the nice one here <laughs> so I did record myself having the drink and they gave me the white drink the see-through clear one and that's the one I got with Alea that one is actually very good I like it it kind of tastes like Sprite and I usually just chug the drink really fast as fast as you can and that way you just get it over with I think there's a clear one and an orange one. I like the clear one, so I would recommend you ask for the clear one. Also, they did say if you get nauseous to just let them know. I think if you get nauseous and you feel like throwing up or you do throw up, um, they make you reschedule and you will have to retest. So kind of just stay calm, stay in your car, deep breaths, fresh air, and you should be good. I'm just gonna hang out here, not do too much exercise or walking around, cause then I'll start feeling jittery and very hungry and like if I wanna faint. So I have to be back in one hour, well, five minutes before, so in 45 minutes now. She said no water, no food, and then when I go back, they'll take my blood again, and then I'll have to wait 
wait another hour. I'm a little hungry, but the drink and the sugar might keep me going for the next hour, so we should be good. And yeah, we'll catch you guys up in a little bit. Guys, I'm not doing too good. <laughs> <laughs> So I am back, it's, whoa, it's eight o'clock now. I think I have to burp, but I don't wanna throw up. So I just came back from the eight o'clock blood draw. They did draw my blood again, and this time I'm feeling it. I'm feeling pretty weak. <sighs> I feel like I just wanna close my eyes, and take a nap. So they took out my blood again. I have to wait another hour, so like 55 minutes. I'll go back and then I think we should be good. I don't think I get more blood taken out. I'll let you guys know. I'm trying to just relax and not do so much still. I feel like I can't even lift my arms up. I got blood taken out on the same arm they asked me which arm, but I'll just be numb from one. I'm so hungry and there's an IHOP right in front of us. So maybe after we'll go get some celebration breakfast. <laughs> okay, bye. All right guys, so I am back. I just came back from the nine o'clock blood draw. They took out my blood again. This was the last time, so I'm officially done. I don't have to go back. But it was the same lady that let me record. The second time was a different person, but this time was the same one. And as soon as she called me, she said, let's do it. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully her positive energy gives me good luck this time. Basically, that was it for the glucose test. I tried to just update you guys as much as I could. I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!